Praise God. You may be seated. What a powerful truth that God, that God is for us. Amen. Paul said that in Romans chapter 8. Since God is for us, who can be against us? And anybody that is against us, does it really matter? Like one guy said, God in me is a majority. Amen. Praise God. So God's for you, people. Uh, so I get the privilege of receiving our tithes and offerings. And today we're going to be receiving two offerings. This one, which is for the church. And then also um, we're going to be receiving another one for our special speakers today, which are uh, Yuri and Tanya. Uh, they're here today. They're originally from Ukraine. Um, and so we're glad to have them with us. They'll be ministering today. And uh, you'll be blessed by that. But um, if you have um, an offering or tithe, what you want to give, and you need an offering envelope because you're giving cash, just slip your hand up. One of these ushers would give you an offering envelope and uh, make your checks out to Destiny Church. There's also a couple other ways you can give up there. I guess you could send a check in. And, you know, the Bible says that we should, we who are rich, how many ever looked at yourself as being rich? Have you ever looked at that, yourself that way? And I, I mean, some of you are going, I'm, I'm rich in... Uh, relationships. I'm rich in, because I live in America, I'm rich, you know. But actually, they have a website that you can go on and you can type in your yearly income. And if you make more, this is a few years ago I looked at it, if you make more than 38000 a year, if you make more than that, and you take the whole world's population, you make more than 38000 you're a one percenter. Did you know that? One percenter. That means 99% of the people in the world make less than you. If you make 38000 it might have gone up a little bit now because maybe there's some inflation. But you can go on the website. You can type in your income. You can find out where you're at, a yearly income. So you go, well, I can, you know, I'm not very rich. Well, if you make 38000 a year or more, you're a one percenter. So when, next time you want to say them dirty one percenters, you were one of them. Amen. So we are blessed. Paul said those that are rich need to be willing to distribute, willing to give, willing to communicate and give uh, and be a blessing. Amen. He said, actually, he said, command them. So I'm commanding you today. So let's take our offering in our hand. So we're after Yuri and Tanya, after they speak, then I'm going to give you the opportunity to give to them. And also, but let's just pray over our offering. Lord, we thank you that we can give. Thank you, you're so good to us. You blessed us so abundantly, so many ways. We're grateful, Lord, for everything you've done for us. Now, Lord, as we give, we just believe that we're giving into good ground that will produce a harvest in our lives, that we will have all sufficiency in everything and we'll have an abundance to give to every good work. We thank you for it now. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. God bless you. Go ahead, men, pass the buckets. Um, so uh, this Wednesday, uh, June 29th at 6.30 is the family service right here. It's the, also the end of Kids Camp. Kid Camp starts uh, June 27th through, that's Monday, tomorrow, June 27th through Wednesday, June 29th. And so kids, uh, I think it's six years old to 12, 12 year olds. I think that's the age limit there. Um, we'll be here, check in here at church at, I think it's 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And so, and we'll, they're going to have a great time. It's going to be wonderful weather. And, um, so I want to encourage you all to come. Kelly Rauch, I think I said her name right. Rauch, Rau, sorry. Uh, she's invited the ladies to join her at her home on Thursday, July 7th. So I see Jason back there. So, Jason, raise your hand. So, if you, I don't know where Kelly is, but um, she's my, oh, she's in the back. Okay. So, you can ask Jason where, where that is. So, he, he'll let you know. Um, and then, um, if you have any questions about the church, uh, Dave's the answer man. He knows all things. He's, he's like God, omniscious. You'll never um, ask a question about the church that he doesn't know. He knows. So, he'll be in the back. So, if you have any questions. But this morning, we have a great uh, privilege to have two wonderful people. I met them back in the 90s in Ukraine, 
And um, Yuri was our interpreter for many of the services. He's a great, uh, great, has a great heart. They both do have a great heart, prophetic type ministry. And they're coming uh, here. They've been in uh, Bethel uh, Training Center for three years. And uh, their, uh, their heart is to go back to the Ukraine. Obviously, it's a little bit hairy right now. And so they're really praying about direction on what to do. But we're so honored to have them with us. And would you give it up for them, Yuri and Tanya Bender. Hello. Wow. It's a, such an honor to be here. We are so blessed to be with you. For us, it's as, as a family because uh, when Pastor Steve were coming with Peter, I, we actually came to the Lord by their ministry. And, actually, and uh, they were coming and uh, <laughs> so incidents in us. And now, like this song, like next generation. <laughs> so we are, we feel like we're children of this house. We are your uh, fruit, uh, you are a uh, result of your prayers or your sending your missionaries. And, and we believe that we'll go right now to serve the people and it's gonna be your children, their children. <laughs> I mean, spiritually. <laughs> so, so it's a, so that's why we are very, um, Thankful and grateful to be here, Pastor Steve, Pastor Trish. Thank you for all your hosp hospitality. We feel loved and we feel like God is uh, Spoil. <laughs> spoiled <laughs> through you. We are so blessed. Thank you so much. Uh, we've been waiting for this meeting with you for like a few months. And every time we thought of coming here, we felt like, family type of warm, you know, nice feeling. Because um, we, we don't just know it, we feel it. You know, how much you love us and how much you've been supporting Peter Mel during all the years while he started so many, he started hundreds and hundreds of groups all over villages in Ukraine, Moldova, Russia, uh, somewhere else. And uh, we know it's done by the strength of this house. Of course, by some other people in the body of Christ, but I think you were the biggest input, prayer input and financial input into Ukraine, into Belarus, into those countries. Thank you so much. Yeah, these fruits will remain forever of what you've been sowing into our territories. Uh, you're asking me to say about Ukraine, uh, right now we need your prayers like never before. Uh, we need like without prayers and without God's supernatural he uh, help, it's impossible for Ukraine to win such a uh, uh, like attack, terroristic attack to our country. So we're very uh, asking you, uh, pray, please pray for our country. Pray, pray for uh, that we will overcome this evil, and this evil will not come to hearts of our people because so much atrocity that we can see right now that people are very um, started to hate, like uh, Ukraine never was a hateful um, nation. Uh, we were peaceful people like hobbits, you know, <laughs> working on our land, <laughs> enjoying life, um, like 40% of the uh, bread in the world was from Ukraine, those hobbits. <laughs> Why I'm saying hobbits? Because I never seen people who were very um, loved to work. Like uh, my parents, they were not perfect. They were like living in under communism, but they're... Um, desire to work, uh, hardworking people. This is Ukrainians, and and that's why 40% of the bread is coming from Ukraine because it's hardworking people. Now, even under the bombs, these uh, people from villages they say, "What?" But we right now we need to sow the fields, and under the bombs, the tractors they're going on the fields, and and you cannot stop them. They say, "Right now is the season. If we'll um, miss the season, we'll not have the." harvest and and it's really like um, 
amazing how they like under bombing risking their life but this is who they are they're bread making people and 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 but right now this like uh, galaya you know russia is big like almost 30 times bigger than ukraine and they started this war this without reason war we can see that this is like a uh, uh, spiritual attack to our country trying to bring us back to communism that uh, we are free from and uh, but with you without your prayers without America's helping us um, it's impossible God of course is helping Ukraine because we are fighting for our freedom and for our identity to be to be Ukrainians to be people of peace and bread making and we don't want to be part of like Russian system who wants you know to spread the Russian world and uh, and but right now what I see that spiritually that we need to pray also that this hatred that uh, Russian came with hatreds uh, uh, hatred right hatred and because of so much atrocity our people who are peaceful people right now starting to feel like that we need to hate that russia those russians and we need to uh, like to kill all of them and no, no it's impossible <laughs> it's and it's not on plans but we right now play, praying that that hatred will not become part of our identity so please pray for that and uh, pray for victory Victory in our land and in our hearts. Victory in our lands and in our hearts. I, I, my children, they know that in the first beginning of the war, I was saying, I want that Putin to die. And Robert's like, Mom, you're a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark just like, Mom, it's not their fault. The Russians are and saying, I'm against uh, Putin. But like, we, they, they understand that it's like a system that they are slaves to. They are slaves. Russian people are slaves to this system also. And that's why we need like freedom, victory, and we need like clean hearts. That Ukrainians still will be peaceful people who are making the bread for the nations. And spiritually too. Last one. Thank you. Now it's time for the word. I brought you something amazing. And I've got Nathaniel to help me. I've got the gift from your church. Uh, it's called, um, with, with the name of the church, the pen. And I was told that it's working on the screen. So if I'll be clicking, um, can you put it on the big one? On this one? Oh, just these two. Oh, sorry, I thought we can use this one. Okay, so I was told that if I click it, it will move. Um, the topic today that I felt from the Lord that um, God prepared a 10x growth for your church. 10x growth for individuals. For not just for the church in numbers, but for everybody's spiritual walk with the Lord. And in the beginning I thought, but they're already so mature. Like it's hard to meet a, like every one of you is like an angel. <laughs> It's hard to meet a person who is mean or who is, like, not smiley. So I thought, God, they're already so mature. And, and still I feel this is from the Lord, that God wants to multiply the influence of every one of you at the places where you are, at the work, at the study place, at where you're located. God wants to multiply 10x, at least 10x, influence um, that you have. Um, raising the kingdom giants. I feel like God wants to increase that process. Okay, let's see if the pen works. Yeah, you see? Uh, <laughs> uh, so, let's go quick. Typical ways how a person's potential is being developed today in the society. Family, friends, school system, universities, courses, seminars, conferences, boot camps, internship programs, job, business environment, spouse, of course, church services. Let's go a little further. 
But let me tell you, it's not enough. Um, advanced ways how person's potential is being developed, and mostly it's among believers, is we have home groups, we have, like, we see example of Jesus and his 12 disciples. Um, discipleship, coaching one-on-one, -on -one, like Paul was coaching Timothy. Uh, we know tutoring uh, online is being developed. Uh, we know many online videos now, courses, conferences, Bible schools. That's all that is helping us tremendously, right? It's really helping us to mature. But let me tell you, still not enough. <laughs> Let's go further. Highly advanced. You, you want my pen now? <laughs> you got some, maybe. You can try it on the screen. <laughs> uh, now, highly advanced how a person's potential is being developed, and it's only among believers. Highly advanced methods is we see Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, teachers, to equip his people. So to equip us, God, Christ himself, has given us Fivefold ministry uh, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That's the will of God for every one of us, that we would achieve measure of the fullness, whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And this process has begun in us by the Holy Spirit. And Christ gave us gifts to help us. So we have pastors, apostles, prophets who are coming here regularly and in the house, teachers, evangelists, and so on. But let me tell you, still not enough. <laughs> still not enough. So... Please ask me a question. What else God has for our growth? It seemed like we went through everything that is existing, right? And please do not think I'm bringing you a new doctrine. I'm bringing you something you already know. I just want to refresh the revelation. And I feel God wants to refresh it in everyone's heart. So what's in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, we see that for in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. So the revelation that we are one body, we are connected we are not isolated human beings. We are all connected. So it's not like in the university setting, for example, every student is coming from different places and they're learning from the teacher. We are like a connected body, a living, living organism that is connected. If I learn something, I immediately pass it to somebody else. And he's learning something and he's passing and she's passing and everybody's passing. Because in the body, blood flows everywhere. So every cell is influencing every cell. Do you know what I mean? So it's amazing supernatural process of maturing happening if we get this revelation that we are the body, we are all connected. Where's my pen? Let's read 1 Corinthians 12. Now to each one, each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Let me read it again. Now to each one, can you say to me? To me. That it's about you right yes. to each one the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good can we say together for the common good 
So whatever I receive from the Holy Spirit, it's not just for me. Any revelation that I receive, it's not just for me. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the, uh, by the one Spirit. Verse 10, to another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. You know all these verses about the gifts of the Spirit. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one. Can we say to each one? So to you and to me, just as He determines. Nathaniel. <laughs> um, I, wa I want you to look again. I highlight it. Each one says twice in, in these verses. For the common good. So it's not that Holy Spirit is giving gifts to the most holy, dedicated individuals. As soon as we come to Christ and we receive Holy Spirit, bam, that's it. You have something that everyone needs. Let me repeat it again. As soon as we come to the Holy Spirit, to this river, and we connect to this river. Every day we receive something that everyone needs. I know it sounds a little bit illogical. Usually people think pastors are receiving the word for the church, and that's our spiritual food. Absolutely, yes, amen, million times. But at the same time, because we are the body, and you are connected to the same Holy Spirit. You receive something every day from the Holy Spirit. And imagine like a cell in the body, you receive it. And the whole body needs it. So your revelations are needed for the whole body. Okay? Let's go further. The Holy Spirit placed common good. Remember from the previous verse, common good, for common good. Into every one of God's children. Pursuing Holy Spirit's common good. From that verse in 1 Corinthians. In each other. Is the key for speedy spiritual growth. So if I know that, for example. I'm sorry, what's your name? Doug. Huh? Doug. Doug. For example, if I know. Doug, Yuri. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, if I know that Doug got the revelation today. He's got something from the Lord. It's my choice to pursue that revelation from him and get it from him. For example, he mentioned something that, oh, I had such an encounter with God. It's my choice to come to him and ask him about it and pull it out from him and get a blessing <laughs> Or I can just like, well, he's lucky. God touched him. Hmm. Good for him. And then I hear the testimony that God touched somebody during the camp or during worship time and you experienced something. Or you prayed for somebody and person got healed. So there is an encounter with the Lord, with power of God. It's my responsibility to pursue that. Not just to ignore, oh, well, whatever. Why God is not blessing me? Why God blessed her? Why? God blessed her to give it to you. So go to her or to him and ask, like, how did that happen? What happened? How did God touch you? You prayed for the person? Tell me more. And as she or he will tell you the experience, that very moment, that gift, common good, will come into your spirit and you will get it into your life because we are in the body we are connected does it make sense yeah, yeah. so pursuing holy spirit's common good in each other is the key for a speedy spirit now you can eat spiritual food not just from sunday services but from everyone in the church every day of the week Every hour you want to call somebody, 
you can receive input. You can receive spiritual fire, encouragement, love, help, advice, wisdom, whatever you need. There's always somebody who carries your breakthrough. Because pastor cannot receive all your phone calls. <laughs> so God created such a beautiful dynamics in the body that we all can help each other. Isn't that awesome? Okay, where's my pen? ta -da. <laughs> You love my pen, huh? <laughs> it takes a church to raise a giant. You remember the phrase, it takes a village to raise a baby? I rephrased it. <laughs> it takes a church to raise a giant. So it's not enough for our spiritual growth, just Sunday services. It's amazing what we receive from the Lord prophetically every week. This is, I'm not putting it down even a bit. Please understand me correctly. This is first amazing downloads from the, from the heavenly realms that comes to the body. Bam! Through apostolic words, through pastor's words, through prophets and, and so on. But then, every day of the week, there is additional power wants to come into your life through brothers and sisters. So... Uh, I know it sounds really weird, but I phrased it this way. Your local church becomes your coach. Because some people are like, I need a spiritual father. All these major leaders in the church, they are too busy. So who will be my spiritual father? And they're like, nobody's discipling me. And they're like, oh, poor, poor me. <laughs> I have nobody to disciple me. And I believe the, the beautiful picture that God prepared for the body of Christ, that we should not be discipled by one person. We should be discipled by the body. It makes perfect sense, right? Of course, it's a little bit hard when so-and-so maybe a little bit weird and a little bit this and a little bit that <laughs> how can I receive a revelation a wisdom from such a person <laughs> of course it takes and we will get to that but it takes spiritual eyes to see what Holy Spirit is doing in that individual okay let's go further it is our responsibility to pursue our coach. Uh, that revelation struck me uh, about a few years ago because uh, I was always waiting for Holy Spirit to bring people into my life. And then they would sit right next to me in the conferences and I would continue to pray, God, bring people into my life. And I would not pursue to pay attention who is sitting next to me. And as soon as that clicked in me, that, hey, I need to pay more attention on people who are around me. I noticed that they have everything I need. All the revelation, all the wisdom, all the support and help. So let's go further. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So then, when you come together... Let's look how Paul puts it. It's not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. So there was a conflict. Like people would come for, uh, for a communion and somebody would start earlier, somebody would come later. Don't you have homes to eat or drink or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those uh, who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. And then verses 20 to 22. So then when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry. Da, da, da. Verse 22. Don't you have... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's the same verse I just highlighted. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go back. Nathan, let's go back. I just highlighted the, the yellow 
Uh, do you despise the church of God? Verse 22. Yeah, next one. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to point the attention. When Paul is discussing the issue between believers, he's not saying, do you despise individuals? He says, you despise the church of God. And then next verse. Next slide. Um, so then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in unworthy manner, remember these famous verses, will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink for the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body, uh, I highlighted this one, without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment to themselves. So that is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. We should recognize the body of Christ. That's the whole point from all these verses. Okay? That's the summary. We should and we must recognize the body of Christ. The local body of believers, Destiny Church, and the universal body of believers. And then we will not be weak and sick and falling asleep, but strong, healthy, and revived. We, we kind of remind this to ourselves every time we, we have communion. That we should respect the body of Christ. We should recognize the body of Christ. That's the whole point of communion. We remember about Christ and his body. And if we neglect the body, it comes with the consequences. Negative ones. Like weak, sick, fallen asleep. But if we pay attention to the body and recognize the gifts in each other, it comes with the benefits. We become strong, we become healthy, we become revived. I will show you just one more scripture. Uh, recognizing the body of Christ makes us strong, healthy, revived. Yes. And that's just, I want to repeat it again. Pursuing, uh, yeah, let's read it. Pursuing the, the back. Pursuing Holy Spirit's common good in each other is the key for speedy spiritual growth. Let's go. 2 Corinthians 5.16, for now on, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. 2 Corinthians 5.16, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Um, another translation, uh, I highlighted here, we regard no one according to the flesh. Let's look at another translation. The same verse. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How different we know him now. And then another translation. So from now on, we refuse to evaluate people merely by their outward appearances. For that's how we once viewed the anointed one. But no longer do we see him with limited human insight. Recognizing the body of Christ by the spiritual eyes. That's the whole point. Recognizing by the eyes of the spirit, not through the flesh, but through the spiritual eyes, will make us strong, healthy, and revived. Recognizing the body of Christ is looking at everyone through the spiritual eyes seeing what good in particular Holy Spirit placed into different members of the body. Somebody has anointing, somebody has gifts, talents, favor, grace, wisdom, understanding, some mantles God gave to some people, callings, assignments, and so on. All of us, we have so much. All of us, we are packed. Can you say with me, I am packed. Come to me, <laughs> and I'll help you. <laughs> Recognizing what people carry in the spirit. That's what it means, recognizing the body. That's when we take communion. We refresh this understanding. I want to recognize everyone around myself. Okay, where's my pen? As we recognize anointing, gifts, talents, favor, grace, wisdom, understanding, mantles, callings, assignments among us, we can benefit from it substantially. 
it is the quickest way to become giant in faith is to pursue Holy Spirit's common good, remember from that verse, in each other. I believe that is the key to an amazing spiritual growth. When we eat spiritually, not once a week, not twice a week, not three times a week, but every time we connect to each other, of course in prayer, of course with the Word of God, of course with other activities, but every time we connect, we can grow. Every time we connect, we can grow. At least you can give or you can receive, but the dynamics is every time we meet somebody. Okay, let's go. We should not just recognize the gifts of Jesus. Remember, Jesus gave us gifts, fivefold ministries. But we should also recognize the gifts that brothers and sisters around us have received from the Lord. So we all carry gifts. Fivefold ministers are the gifts. This is a completely different separate category of the people. So there are gifts and there are people who have the gifts. So body of Christ did amazing respecting the gifts. Now I believe it's time for us to recognize people with the gifts. Uh, let's go. Ephesians 4.16. From him, the whole body joined and held together for, by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. You see, God wants all of us to do our work because all of us are packed. <laughs> Okay, let's go. When we recognize the gifts in people, we can benefit from ourselves. But the big thing also what happens, we help them to be mobilized for doing their work. Because sometimes people don't believe that they hear from the Lord. And when we, by spiritual eyes, we see the gift on them and we talk to them and encourage them that, hey, this is from God in your life. Hey, did you remember that coincidence? It was not a coincidence. <laughs> it was God's hand upon you. Do you remember this situation happened? That's what God did at that time in your life. So we try to point them out what God is doing in their lives. And we are in turning them on into the ministry. We're turning them on into, hey, you have the gifts of the Spirit. You can function in the gifts. Come on. What are you hearing right now? And we ask people like, what do you hear from the Lord right now? Close your eyes. Let's pray. What do you hear right now? And we encourage them. We are mobilizing them to hear. Um, one example, funny example. <laughs> um, one person um, came, to, came to church and uh, Tanya saw a spirit of death upon him. Like, like he looked like a corp. Like she turned around and she saw like a corp. And we came to him, we prayed with him and his wife, invited to our house. He got baptized in the Holy Spirit. He told us the story later that um, his mother committed suicide and he wanted to commit a suicide. And uh, sh his mother actually died from suicide. And he did four, a few attempts. And so finally he brought his finances in order was really a uh, really successful guy in Bay Area. And um, I'm telling this testimony because he's okay with that. <laughs> and so um, he brought his finances in order, all the insurances and everything, and prepared to commit suicide, another attempt, on Monday. And on Sunday, he came to church. Um, and so we prayed for him, Holy Spirit, came, he started speaking in tongues, and then I felt like I need to coach him a bit over the phone. And every day I felt from the Lord to ask him, okay, you have Holy Spirit now, what Holy Spirit is telling you? And I would just bombard him with this question, like, you have a connection, come on, open, open your ears <laughs> and just listen to the Holy Spirit. And four days, and I told him, write everything down. 
Whatever you're hearing, write down, and I will tell you later if this is from the Lord or not. I'll help you to distinguish where's the truth, where's the, your imagination. And so the day four of our coaching, I'm asking, like, what did you hear from the Lord? And he's like, I heard him to tell me that you are in financial trouble. Like, you in financial need. And that was at the time when we really were uh, studying in school. I couldn't work. That was the time when your church helped us amazingly. We, <laughs> we are so thankful for financial support from Pastor Steve, from the church, uh, to help us to go through the study time. And that was a hard time that very, that we were very weak. Uh, we needed to pay rent. We couldn't. And uh, he's like, I feel like you are in financial trouble. Is that a medical bill? <laughs> I'm like, nope. <laughs> but, uh, but is that true? Are you in financial difficulty? I'm like, yes, you heard it from the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he helped us greatly at that time. So um, we need to encourage people to connect with God. We need to encourage them to like, hey, you have the gift. Holy Spirit is in you. Every gift can manifest any moment. Come on. He is packed with million gifts. Holy Spirit is unlimited. You can even have the gift that we never seen in the world. Something can manifest, whatever. And then we, of course, we discern with the heart of God. And right, you know, right then and there, we discern with the Holy Spirit, is this is from the Lord. And we tell the person, you know what, I think this is more of your imagination. Uh, but keep on trying. <laughs> but that's how we coach. Okay, um, okay let's go. 1 Corinthians 14, 26. What then, brothers? When you come together, look how Paul is encouraging us. Each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Let all things be done by building up. Um, I highlighted here each one. Can you see each one? Do you see yourself there? So when you come together, like today, each one has a hymn. I thought I come to church to listen. Yes, but no, not only to listen. Lesson, revelation, a tongue, interpretation. Uh, who should I give it to? you will feel from the Holy Spirit who to give it to. As you watch people around you, Holy Spirit, who do you want me to, to, to talk to today? And you will feel one person highlighted to you, like your eyes come constantly back to that person, or you will feel it in another way. Then after service, come to that person and just talk, and then during the conversation, you will feel like, I think I can give him some testimony of what happened in my life. And it will minister to that person. So I believe that works even for large meetings, not just for home groups. When you come together, each one has a hymn, lesson, revelation. Pursuing Holy Spirit's common good in each other is the key for a speedy spiritual growth. So when somebody comes to you and says, you know what, I feel like I need to talk to you. Or I feel like uh, I want to pray for you. Please receive it as from the Lord. Because Holy Spirit here is connecting us as a body. And so if somebody feels something, of course it might be not from the Lord. Of course. But then you will feel like a cringing inside of you. Because Holy Spirit is in you. And if, if somebody will tell you like, Oh, I feel like you will get a divorce in two weeks. You will feel like... <laughs> 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 then you can say, um, thank you, but bye-bye. <laughs> then you can flush that word. <laughs> But if that resonates with you, and as person is sharing some testimony, and you feel like, oh, mm, there's something in it. Wow. That's a, a signal to you that this is from the Holy Spirit. 
And this is a gift, like a blood coming to you from the body. And you, you can receive it and benefit from it. Okay, let's go further. Matthew 28. Great commandment. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. We know that. Uh, I highlighted here, make disciples. So this is a commandment of Jesus. Great commandment has been given to us as to the body of Christ. So we should disciple believers in the body format. I used to think that Jesus said, go and make disciples. So I need personally myself to find people that I need to disciple. And usually I find somebody and then two weeks he's listening to me and then he's gone. <laughs> and then I try to disciple somebody else and I disciple them and they're like, well, whatever, and they're gone. And I'm like, okay, how do I disciple? But really it's, it's simpler than we think. The assignment to disciple given to the body. So we as a church are called to disciple a person. For example, a new person is coming uh, to Sunday service. By the way, can, may I ask, is there somebody who's first time? Wow, welcome. Uh, let's uh, imagine, okay, imagine. Let's imagine that you are from the area and you never met Jesus, although I see that you are a believer. But let's imagine that you do not know Jesus and you came, uh, can you please say your name? Okay, oh, nice to meet you, Kay. Um, so can you imagine, Kay came first time, she doesn't know Jesus. We as a body, we need to look at the person. Um, can we go back one slide, please? My pen doesn't work for back. <laughs> <laughs> go, therefore, make disciples. We see the person is coming. And we as a body should recognize we need to disciple K. Does it make sense? Not, oh, Pastor Steve is so good at it. Let him disciple this lady. <laughs> or Linda is amazing teacher and preacher. And let, I want to connect her to her because she can help her. No, you can help her as well. We all are called to disciple people who are coming to the church. And let's go further. It takes a church to raise a giant. Um, now, let's pray. But how, how do we pray? Um, I want to activate us a little bit. I hope it will be okay. Yes, you put like this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I was praying with that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, so let's pray for the neighbor. Okay, can we do that? Because when we activate, when we practice, it helps us to get the revelation. So if you can please sit down, sit closer to somebody, if you are alone sitting, if you could please come into the row. And you will pray for the neighbor on your right. You will pray for the neighbor on your right. And if you have nobody, we'll, we will pray later for the person on the left. But we will pray for 10 seconds maybe 15 seconds and then we share what we feel maybe one word maybe one picture maybe like whatever it comes to your heart but it should be encouraging it should be positive <laughs> it should be how kiss from heaven to the person okay because that's what prophecy is doing for encouragement for edification um, can we do that? Because all of you are packed. So all of you can share this. Holy Spirit, we thank you for using every one of us at this very room. We thank you that we are a body. And we thank you that you're going to speak, even right now, 
through every one of us. You're going to bless through us. You're going to bless our neighbor on the right. Show us. What do you want to give? What the image or word? What do you want to give to my person on the, on the right? My neighbor on the right? In Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'll give you one minute to share with the person on the right. One minute to share. If you have nothing, that's okay. We're practicing. You can say, I've got nothing. That's fine. Okay, five more seconds. Five more seconds. Okay, now let's look at the person on the left. Let's pray for the person on the left. And even if you husband and wife, you can receive an amazing word from the Lord for your spouse. So let's pray, Holy Spirit, show us something right now from your heart to the person on my left. Give us image or a word, something that would be a blessing to the person on my left. And we receive it by faith. In Jesus' name. Now let's take a minute to share with the person on the left. What did you hear? What did you feel? Maybe some testimony is coming to your mind. Maybe some story of your victory is coming to your mind. Maybe you saw an image of the future, like a, like a prophetic word, maybe word of knowledge. Whatever comes to your heart. And you can share it, and if it's not from God, it's okay. Person will flush it, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit, that every one of us is blessed with the gifts of, of your Spirit. Thank you for giving gifts to every one of us. Thank you that we're all packed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, five more seconds. Okay, can we please look over here? Can you please raise your hand if you felt that that word spoke to you? Please hold, hold hands. Like you felt like your neighbor really gave you something tangible. Isn't that amazing, guys? That we can minister in the power of the Holy Spirit to each other. Anytime when we want. But especially when we feel the desire from the Lord. We should just say yes to Jesus and just come to that person and say, You know what? I feel like I'm supposed to talk to you. I'm not sure about what. Can you tell me your story? What's going on? Can I pray for you? And then conversation will start and you will feel inside like, ah, that's the reason. Oh, okay, now I hear you. Holy Spirit, I hear you. And then you share something and it will be a blessing. Tanichka, you want to Okay, guys, it was a privilege to minister to you. May the Lord bless you as a church for raising into more and more influence we're so encouraged to see that uh, there are people from the church is running for a government offices uh, we're so happy for you are spreading geographically and we know the giants are being raised here to influence not just geographically but spiritually your prayers i've been on prayer meeting on thursday ah like all ninjas spiritual ninjas <laughs> Like so powerful and, I, and these prayers are reaching the world. And I, I know you're praying for Ukraine. So thank you so much. Um, I know there are already many giants here. But I believe 
especially in the children who are growing here, they are going to be big in the land. Yes, I proclaim that from this church will be more and more and more giants of God, leaders of the kingdom of God who would influence every sphere of society, who will be growing in the body. It will take a church to raise giants, and they will be in amazing influentials who would influence governments, who would influence countries, who would influence different spheres of society. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Well, amen. We can hear from God. God gave us the Holy Spirit so we can hear from Him. Amen. I want to receive an offering for um, Yuri and Tanya. I, I uh, do this, uh, you know, I, I receive offerings for speakers because I, I, I just feel like if you want to really bless them, I mean, whatever you give in this offering, uh, it's going to go to them. And so I just want you to have that opportunity if you really like to bless, bless them this morning. So if you're giving cash for them, just uh, need an offering envelope uh, if you want a receipt. Uh, if you're giving out a check, just make it out to Destiny Church. We put all the monies together and give them one check. Isn't that a great message, though? That we all have the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> I know that sometimes, you know, we think, well, I have the Holy Spirit. I, I'm supposed to I get something from the Lord. I'm supposed to share it with the church. But you should really share it with somebody. Well, God will highlight somebody to share it with. And we don't have to. We do that in, during times of fellowship and opportunity. Share it one-on-one. -on -one. That's, that's a powerful way to share. Amen. So let's pray over our offering. Lord, thank you that we can give. Thank you, Lord, that you love uh, cheerful givers. So that's how we give, we, that you imparted to us spiritual things. And now we have the opportunity, the privilege to impart to them our natural things. So Lord, bless this gift to them, Lord. And we just pray uh, that you multiply the seed sown in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, men, pass the offering buckets. So in just a moment here, uh, Yuri and Tanya will be up here, and so if you need prayer for anything, if you have a physical need or struggling with anything else, and then we also do have prayer counselors that will come, and so we, uh, we don't want to totally overwhelm them, but uh, I think they'll stay here until tonight. <laughs> and they, I mean, they really love praying for people individually, so if you got time, they got time because they'll be around for a few more days. So remember that uh, tomorrow camp starts, 10 a.m., kids check in here at church. But if you would like prayer for anything, um, they move, they, they operate prophetically, and um, they will be glad to pray for you. And so even if you, if you um, uh, are in a hurry, or if you're not in a hurry, you'd like to hang around all day and wait, that'd be great, amen. But we have some refreshments in the back. Let's all stand together. And, you know, we have some refreshment in the back for you to uh, fellowship with us. We've got a coffee bar there. And then uh, just be open as you fellowship. Just be open to God giving you a word for somebody. Amen. God bless you all. If you need prayer, please come forward. You're all free to go. God bless you.